Hey, it's Norm from Tested.com, and I'm really fortunate to be in Lausanne, Switzerland, which is one of the homes of Logitech. Of course, if you play games, you might have heard of this company. They make gaming mice and keyboards, and they just released a new series of gaming mice, which I've tested the G series. I like the G500S. It looks a lot like the old MX510, but it's not the same because obviously in, in 10 years since the MX series to come out, you guys have done a lot of improvements. So I'm here with Christoph, who is an engineer at Logitech, and we're in your optical sensor lab. You make sensors here for mice. What, what goes into an optical sensor in a mouse? It's not a ball anymore that rolls, right? It's, it's, exactly. it's a light. <laughs> so It's been like that for yeah, about 10 years. So as you said, all the magic is inside for, for these gaming mice. You don't see it, but the progresses have been constant. So what I can show you here is a few stuff we do in our lab and in the company. So the optical sensors, they more or less all work with the same principle. You have a magnified view of it here, and it's basically three elements. You have a light source in red that will just shine light. This would probably be like an LED, a very bright LED, yes. red LED. It can be a red LED, it can be an infrared LED, it can be a, la a laser, mm -hmm. it can be several lasers, so many different uh, type of modules, same principle, but different performance where with different tricks in the, in the design. And the so blue is a lens then? It's a lens, it's a plastic lens, but it's more complicated than your regular cell phone lens. You see there are many surfaces, it's tricky, there are mechanical functions, two surfaces here that are optical lens, mm -hmm. which will shape the beam onto the surface. And then and that bounces back. Exactly, and you have two additional surfaces here and on top that will reflect the, the light onto an imager a piece wow. of silicon that is imaging so light the goes surface. from the theoretically LED through possible one or two lenses, bounces off a surface and then through another type of plastic. Exactly. And then onto a sensor. Exactly. And this then is, this, the sensor yeah. is what then interprets that data. It's an imager, like an imager you have in a camera. It takes a film, a movie of the surface that mm -hmm. is shifting, sliding, and then it reports the cursor as the way he sees the surface moving. So, as simple as that. But in, in a digital camera, you you know we get bigger sensors for bigger, better cameras. But on a mouse, the mouse doesn't get bigger. The sensor stays the same size. So how do you increase your DPI, or as you call it, CPI, the counts per inch? An important piece of it is, is the optics. Often people imagine that the piece of silicon, everything is, you know, written in there. But the optics can really play tricks by magnifying or demagnifying stuff, so you can increase or lower the resolution with it. And then on, on top of that, once you have a fixed size uh, imager, there is a lot of signal processing, we call it DSP. And with DSP you can also play and work on the signal to increase, reduce the, the DPI and make it as accurate as possible. So really there is analogic uh, components and there is digital components and both will make the end uh, result. And over the years what has evolved then is different types of using the light differently, using the lenses differently and yeah. changing that DSP that you mentioned about and the sensor yeah. differently and all that combined to make more accurate gaming mice. Here you have the same system so through, this, through scale. So oh, it's, wow. a, it's about the same system. Yeah, I think it's a, yeah, very close, not exactly the same sensor. But this is the true scale. These were things we were doing like uh, five, six years ago. So what has happened during these six years? The size could be reduced to this. From this to this. this. And it has and all the same components. All the same components. The big LED has been replaced by a Vixel, a type of laser that is a tiny piece of semiconductor. No more packaging and uh, no more cables to connect, really much more uh, integrated. Then the optics, it's still there, it's the black part you see, mm -hmm. but it's much smaller. And the imager is of course, uh, we don't see it, it's inside. So here we have the same function, but much smaller size. It's less hungry in terms of current. You can integrate anywhere in mice, giving flexibility on the, the gaming mice design, for instance. So it's not only a story about accuracy, it's also a story about current consumption, size, and number of surfaces on which the same sensor will work. No need to have always the same mat. And all these were first developed in office markets, whereas gaming was focusing only on accuracy. And now we are at a turning point where all these assets can be, are going to be integrated in the gaming world while continuing the, the performance, the accuracy story that gamers are looking for. So we will really bring both worlds together. 
in this lab, you guys, from con concept to production, you make the sensor technology, and it obviously doesn't come out this size, it starts as something bigger. So, for example, when Logitech developed the dark field technology for using mice on, on glass, it was something that was originally like that big, right? So this is what you guys built in this exactly. lab using uh, uh, the dark field microscopy. What, what type of other testing equipment do you use here to test the components of a sensor? So all the different functions that you have seen, we have setups that are custom made that allow to measure them. So there is no interpretation of what the performance should be. We just measure each and single component and then we measure the full system to make sure that at the end you have the performance you need. So I can walk you through a, a couple of setups that, yeah, let's go that allows to, to measure these. So here we have the capability to put a light source and the setup will just move and make a three-dimensional pattern of the emission. So each and every of our modules, they go through this type of characterization to make sure that the pattern is compatible with the best possible tracking and that we can also benchmark all our different modules and see how, how much we improve them over the years. And of course, we can have also competitors mice that mm. are measured here to have a clear view of how the technology works for the others and for us and, and, and bring the best to the, the consumer. So this machine is, is not impressive, but it allows to characterize LEDs in a way that nobody else does. Basically those LEDs, it's a piece of a semiconductor into an epoxy bubble and it shine lights. Yeah. And it's good enough for most of the indicators you have on your electronics. Now we quickly realize that when you want to shoot for the best performance, you need this beam to be perfectly aligned. It should not shoot right or left, otherwise the, sense, the, the signal will be less good for the, for the sensor. You're saying that not all LEDs that you buy from your suppliers are created equal. We had to find out what was distorting light, but we quickly realized that different suppliers, different batch, there was always a percentage of LED that were not good enough. So we had to find what is the parameter that will make the LED good enough. And we found out that how you center this piece of silicon into this epoxy bubble is a key parameter. If you off-center it during assembly of the LED, manufacturing of it, then the beam will be uh, distorted. So we build a very simple setup in essence where you put the LED here, there are some optics and a camera, and it makes a precise image of where the die, which is sub-millimeter, mm -hmm. is located within the epoxy. And on top of that, it will give you by the micron how much it is offset compared to the perfect uh, location. And doing this, we could do two things. We could ask our suppliers to have an accuracy of less than 100 micron for the, the, the LEDs we would be delivered and a way to measure it. Right. So it's not only a, a number we brought up and that they would not be capable of doing it. So we made several of these uh, small setups, homemade here in our workshops, and we distribute it to our subcontractors, our suppliers of LEDs and to our production line to make sure that through all the logistics, the LEDs we get are only of the best quality and will then be, we will have a constant performance for the mouse that we are manufacturing with it. Consistent performance, high performance, things that you guys test for here at the optical lab. And once you're done building a sensor, then you have a separate lab for testing the tracking ability of that sensor. Exactly. Right. Well, thank you, Christoph, so much for giving us a sense of how a mouse, an optical mouse works, and uh, let's uh, move over to that tracking lab I just mentioned and see how those mice are then tested. All right, so I'm here now in Logitech's tracking lab, and here's where they actually build machines to test their sensors they have in a mouse, like this G500S. I'm here with Francois, you're a senior engineer at Logitech, and so how do you test a sensor? When you design a new optical sensor, what are the rigors that you put it through? So for that, we have a machine, and the machine permits to test at sensor level. So it means the machine is capable of doing trajectories over different kinds of surfaces to reflect what we call corner surfaces in order to improve on all and, and this is a machine that you guys built here in, in your workshop. Sure, sure. It's a one-of-a-kind machine. So this is a 3D machine, so it has X and Y capability, and it has a vertical 
capability as well. So this is a machine that was completely taught and designed and built and then uh, validated because not only build the machine is important, it's to validate it as well because then when you want to rely on it, you need to be sure that the machine is doing the right. It's being consistent, uh, consistent and, the, and, exactly. and the data that it's sure. providing you sure. is going to be the same every time. So you put a sensor on that, that, uh, on that platform and you yes. said you have four different surfaces that basically represent you know, most of what your consumers will, will use, uh, including even in glass with your dark field technology. For glass, we developed something very special. We build level of dirtness in glass. Because if you take glass, when it's very clean, it's very difficult to track on it. We create level of dirtness of glass in order to represent what is a clean glass in the, in the field and what is a dirt glass in the field and which is the level we want to match. The other machine is, is a simplification of this one that is capable of testing mainly mice and we can put different kind of surfaces and the goal is really to have many different approach to, to testing an optical sensor. All right, Francois, so one last machine here is super interesting because this one you said actually tests the acceleration and the speed of the sensor, how many, how many uh, counts per inch right, that the sensor can track. How does this machine work? So this machine is, in a way, it's a spinning disk machine that is capable to exceed the capability of the sensor. So the goal here is really to move the, the, the disk up to the limit of the sensor and to rate which is the end of the speed or which is the maximum acceleration the system can support. It's, it's just a spinning disk. So you mount like a sensor or a mouse and you have a, a platform that just rotates at very high frequency. It's kind of like when we test mice, we were thinking of a good way to have consistent testing. It's like a record player spinning around, but way more precise, right? Yeah, in fact, it's like a record player, but it's a strong record player. Huh. It has the capability to handle a high acceleration up to 40G, even more, so we cap it because no sensor is capable of going beyond of that. You obviously test more than one type of surface. The tracking performance is really dependent of the sensor on the surface, so it's a couple. If you only look at the sensor, at the end, you will be surprised. You need really to look at sensor and surface together and see what's the limit. And then you can take another one and see what's, where is the limit. And again, another one. And then you can understand what's the, what makes the sensor tracking or not. And you can improve on the weak surfaces mm -hmm. without degrading on the, on, 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 on the good one. So it's really to find the right balance between just a big number and what would make sense in the real world. So I imagine you just go buy different mouse surfaces, gaming mouse surfaces, sure. and some are soft, some are cloth, some are hard plastic, and find ones that are most representative of the ones gamers use. Uh, in your testing, what type of surface they tracks best with the mouse? So I would say the most easiest surface in terms of uh, optical system is something like a, a, a structured uh, black plastic, because this is very easy to track. It, it has a lot of information, of tracking information, and those tracking information have a very good uh, signal-to-noise ratio. So it, you have an information and it's reliable. When you so move, not perfectly smooth plastic, but hard, smooth. hard plastic hard with plastic, a little bit of regular, bit of structure. consistent yeah. structure. It, it don't need to be regular in the sense of a pattern. It's even better to have an irregular, ah, okay. but something that is not that deep, not, not having a very rough surface. You, you have something kind of smooth, uh, structured plastic, dark. And this is the perfect surface in terms of tracking. It's maybe not the ideal surface for the gamer. But right. it's like it's why, one, why doesn't why don't all gamers have this? If this is the best one, because like some people like cloth surfaces and those might be harder to track, but maybe more comfortable for a gamer. It's to use. a question of comfort. You know, when you are playing for many hours, the goal is to, to, to be comfortable as well. So people feel better maybe you're having a cloth pad. Cloth pad also have the advantage to be foldable, so you can mm. carry it with you right. very easy. If you have a hard plastic surface and a big one, it's much more difficult to, to carry it. So there are many reasons why people are not focusing to using only this surface. And this is the reason why we have to focus on every kind of possible surface and to, to make the improvement so the sensor works at best on there as well. And so it looks like there's very, obviously very thorough testing and even there, you said there's a machine that clicks the mouse 20 million times. So when I look at a box and it says this mouse would work up to 20 million clicks, you've actually tested that and have clicked a mouse 20 million times? So the, the, the goal was really to validate the fact that we make this improvement and it's, it's real, a real improvement, not only a spec improvement, but hopefully matching in the real life. No, it's, it's a real improvement. We validate it and we validate it using a tool that permits to do this click and to, it's a robot again. It's a robot that clicks three times a second for yes. yeah. like 
Yes. Several months. Yeah, several months. Yes. Oh my God! Until mm -hmm. you finally prove that the mouse. Yeah, on, you not only do it one, you do a lot of units, so you validate that it's not a single uh, by chance right. result. It's a result that is solid and. Uh, that, that makes uh, that makes his way. From a mouse testing standpoint, something that's interesting to me as a product reviewer, we try to imagine a test that would be that would actually reflect a mouse accuracy. And would would you would it be fair to say that drawing a circle, a, a perfect circle, would be a good indicator of a good mouse sensor? I would say when you drive a perfect circle and you can close your circle perfectly in time, I would say then you you have something that is working pretty well. It means that you, the system you observe. Has some some uh, is mastering a, a lot of parameters. It doesn't mean that it must all, but it's it's a sort of confirmation. Very cool. Thank you, Francois. These are things that we never imagine, that never think about when we go into a store and buy a mouse off the shelf. But it's the things that people who develop mice obviously have to consider as an engineer, um, and and that's something that you enjoy doing, and it's extremely cool to see. Uh, so that's it from Logitech's uh, research labs here in Lausanne, uh, Switzerland. I'm Norm from Test.com. We'll have more uh, from our trip on the site and on our YouTube channel. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.